All right, here we go. Welcome to the stream. So I want to welcome everyone here. Lovely morning in London to get some writing started. So I'm feeling pretty excited for this. Pretty excited for a great first stream. A um, little bit nervous, but we will get this thing started pretty soon. Um, want to say a massive thank you to the one viewer who is watching at the moment, but I'm sure a few more people are going to come in. Uh, big shout out to Asher as well, um, Ashbash0073, who, uh, who has already started following this channel. He started yesterday. Um, so let's uh, dive right in. Uh, today, I'm going to start writing uh, my newest novel uh, live on camera. I have no idea what this novel is about or even what genre it is. So we're going to go straight from scratch and hopefully we are going to have a pretty good time doing it. It's a chance for everyone to learn, including me. Um, please do let me know in the chat uh, your thoughts as we go along, what can be improved. Um, Hopefully everything will run smoothly, audio and video. Uh, let me know if the music in the background is too loud or that you can't hear me. So, okay, couple of ground rules. What am I doing here and why am I doing this? Simply because as an author, when I was starting out, I really hoped uh, and really wanted to see uh, another author start from scratch their novel and just talk me through the process, show me why they're using this word and not that word, why they're starting a chapter here and not there, all those little things that go on in the mind of an author as they write. So I hope this is going to be uh, useful to all of you guys, because uh, I'm going to let you into my own thought process. Um, and hopefully, with uh, through my efforts, mistakes, and uh, God willing, day-to-day -day consistency, we're going to see some, uh, some pretty cool stuff. Um, so, a couple of ground rules here. I'm going to write only one page Per session that gives us plenty of time to dive in and sort of break down the construction of each page um, and plus you know in the chat we can uh, we can discuss what's working what's not working and, and why am I doing uh, different things so I started out uh, my first novel uh, published in 2017 hearing voices it has had some pretty good reviews and you guys can check it out I will include links to everything that we talk about today uh, in the notes. And um, so yeah, a couple of ground rules. We're gonna do one page a day and only one page. I'm gonna limit myself to that. Um, as you'll see, uh, that tends to help with the writing process. So without any further ado, we are going to get started. So first thing to do, we have a new page document, uh, a new pages document, I'm on a Mac. so. Uh, this is what it looks like, and uh, we are going to chat. Type in chapter one of a novel. We have no idea what the name is, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, but here we go. A first line. So, in the words of David Mamet, "When the lights go down, you have their attention. We have the audience's attention already. So, how do we construct a first line? What does the first line need to accomplish?" simply this we need to hook the reader's attention so it doesn't really matter whether or not uh, we know what the story is or we don't know what the story is simply can we grab the reader's attention so again I'm starting from scratch here so let's see what comes out um, how about something like let's see here and again we're just gonna type we're not gonna be too concerned yet with editing um, but let's see what comes out. So I'm going to tell you a, uh, no, let's say, how about, I'm going to tell you the truth. Some, okay. Or even better. And see, this is the whole process already. We're already trying to push out this first sentence, see what it, where it wants to go. I think I've got something actually. I'm going to, how about, I'm going to tell you a story, uh, how about which you'll believe. Okay, obviously you don't need spelling, you don't need to be a great speller to be an author. We have the virtues of uh, spelling correction. I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe. And then, how about this, how about this? And then I'll tell you the truth. 
which you won't. Okay, uh, that's kind of a good first sentence. It's not great. It's not. It's not amazing, but it does do a couple of things. It makes a promise to the reader, right? It's saying, you know, if you read this story, then it's going to be worth your time because something cool. So there's going to be some kind of a twist that you're not going to see coming, and that's going to set. Uh, that's going to set the tone for the piece. Okay, so now that I have a first line in the first chapter, uh, let's just format this because obviously this looks atrocious uh, at the moment. Let's select, let's go for a Garamond. Let's bring the font up. And uh, let's, let's centralize this. And uh, you know what? That's not a bad first sentence, actually. Now that I, you know, you keep reading it, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe and then I'll tell you. So what do I know about this story already? Um, well, the answer is nothing, but we can from this first line even um, start to put some things together. First of all, you know, it says I'm. So clearly this is a first person novel. It's going to be written in the first person. Um, it's also got that very conversational tone. So, you know, I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe and then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. Okay, it's also probably going to be a thriller. I know that just simply because I like to read thrillers. That's thriller is the genre that I've written the most in. That was what my first book is in. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe in, then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. It goes like this. It goes like this. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, if I was going to tell this story to someone, that's pretty much how I speak. Uh, and again, I want to. Um, I want to write in a style that is my own voice. So I'm just gonna speak it out. And that really helps me if I just, uh, if I speak out what I'm writing, it helps me get the sound, it helps me get the voice of the character and just refine the whole thing. So it goes like this. Okay, so now now we really do need to, to know what the story is about. Um, can you guys see this? Is this, is this clear enough um, on the screen? Can you read the writing? I hope you can, but let me know if you can't. Um, all right, so let's just start this somewhere. So let's say um, uh, again, we're just we're just writing. We are not going to worry about whether it's good or not. We are just going to logically try and put something together, and then out of the mess, something will come through. It always does. You need that confidence. Let's see, three days, um, three days what? Three days after I arrived. Okay, so already we have the first uh, choice, real choice to make is where is this novel gonna be set? And there are plenty of places to set a novel. We've got fantasy worlds, we've got the real world. Probably I'm gonna stick to the real world, um, but it could be a real world where you know some weird things happen. Um, so I don't wanna do America simply because America is just overdone in my opinion um, I'm thinking something like Japan because I've always wanted to set a novel in Japan I have tried writing some stuff in Japan before I've never published anything in Japan um, to do with Japan so uh, maybe we'll go with Japan I mean for a thriller what have you got in Japan you've got you've got uh, you've got the Yakuza you've got the old and the new you know the technology there the advanced technology uh, it's you know a sort of a kind of a magical place uh, it has that connotation um, and it's interesting you know who doesn't want to go to Japan I want to visit Japan uh, so okay let's go three days after I arrived in Japan um, three days after okay so already we know some other stuff uh, so okay so if I'm gonna write that sentence this means this guy is a tourist uh, it would seem if this is a guy or a girl so three days after I arrived in Japan, uh, let's see. Um, I came back to the hotel. You must be staying in a hotel or something. Let's try a hotel. Let's go to my hotel. And what happened? And the and the receptionist, right? The receptionist. No, not receptionist. What do they have at uh, hotels? They have concierge, right? The concierge. And the concierge told me. Uh, what did she tell me? What did she tell me? Let's say, uh, let's keep it something interesting. How about, told me that a package, yeah, package uh, had been left for me. 
Okay, now that this is an interesting point here. So immediately what you want to do on the first sentence of any thriller is ask a question, right? We want to ask a question and then basically not answer it until, you know, the end of the book. That's what suspense is. Um, okay, so again, we, we've set this whole thing up as it's going to be a story uh, with some kind of a twist, it seems. You know, this, this whole thing, I'll tell you the truth, which you won't. Um, and also that this guy is going to, you know, maybe he's, he's basically lying to us, you know, the whole time. So I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe. That implies that it's a lie. Uh, and, then, and then I'll tell you the truth, which you won't. So it goes like this. Three days after I arrived in Japan, I came back to my hotel and the concierge told me that a package had been left me. Okay, so uh, we have this guy. He's going to receive a package. Um, now, a package in itself is sort of like a mystery box, right? We don't know what's in the package, but... Um, that already presents a question to the reader. You know, what's in the package? Everyone's hopefully going to be guessing uh, what's in the package, and then that's what's going to lead us um, into the next interesting point. Obviously, something's going to be in that package, which um, is the inciting incident. It gets the story moving. So, okay. Um, so this guy, obviously, if we want to make this package, we want to build suspense around this package, so let's write something like uh, I wasn't expecting a package. Uh, well, let's give this guy a little bit of an attitude, actually. Uh, I keep saying guy. Clearly, uh, this this uh, this novel is written by a you know a narrator who is a uh, who is a guy. It could have been a girl. Maybe it will be a girl. I don't know. We'll we'll see as we go. Um, but let's give this person an attitude. Let's give this person an attitude. So uh, let's say she was wrong. You know, you don't want your protagonist to be too likable. Um, so that's that's pretty good, right? So this guy, maybe he has a problem with women. Maybe. How about that, right? What do you guys think of that? A guy with a problem with women as a protagonist? You're the old James Bond. If you actually read the first, uh, the novels there, he wasn't really a nice guy when it came to uh, dealing with women. He was quite a, a bit of a womanizer. Um, so I suppose it can work. Um, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so a package, but she was wrong. I wasn't expecting a package. Right, let's make this even more intriguing. Uh, again, this guy's in Japan. So uh, why is he in Japan? Uh, I don't know why he's in Japan yet. Um, but maybe we can keep building intrigue around this package. We need to we need to keep building the suspense around what this package is because if we're going to use this package, then as the as the big mystery of of uh, this first page, then um, then we we really need to make it the focal point. So I'm just going to increase the uh, the font size of that. Just looks better. Okay, starting to look like a page now. So, uh, three days after, I, okay, I came up, okay. Uh, she was wrong, wasn't expecting. I didn't know anyone in Japan. How about that? I, uh, I didn't know. Yeah, that looks, that's right. I didn't know anyone in Japan. Uh, nor, can you use the word nor these days? Do it, does anybody use the word nor? Oh, we've got two viewers now. Two viewers, welcome into the... Welcome into this uh, session. So, I didn't know anyone in Japan, nor uh, had I told anyone. Okay, this this is exactly the kind of thing we need to do. Nor had I told anyone that I was coming here. Okay, so what we're doing here with this line, we're just, you know, we're, we're again, we're, we're deepening this mystery, uh, both around who this guy is, why is he in this place, which happens to be Japan, and... Um, and then this mystery about this uh, this package that he's received. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to uh, create suspense. And basically that just means in the beginning asking questions, right? Um, but we don't ask the questions outright. We just imply the questions. So here we go. So three days after I arrived in Japan, I came back to my hotel and the concierge told me that a package had been left for me. She was wrong. I wasn't expecting a package. I didn't know anyone in Japan, nor had I told anyone that I was coming here. Um, so, so who could be sending me a package? 
So who could be sending, there's the question stated outright. So who could be sending me uh, a package? Um, okay, so this is sort of, you know, a slightly intriguing uh, opening. We've got that first sentence to really hook the reader that the entire story is going to be one worth reading. Uh, and there's going to be a twist. And then we start, you know, fairly small. We want to keep the stakes fairly low in the beginning. You know, this is just a package. What's in the package? Um, and then and then we build up the story, you know, step by step. We increase the drama. We increase the tension. So we're starting small, but it's got to be something that um, lets the lets the reader start making uh, start making guesses. That's basically what we want to do. Um, okay, so this guy has received a package and he's saying to the concierge, basically, you're wrong. There can't be a package for me. Uh, and she's just going to hold out this package. But, but there it was. But there it was. Uh, no, but she, uh, but, she, uh, but she held it out all the same. Okay, she held it, she held it out, out to me all the same. She held it out the same. Keep the sentences short, shorter rather than longer. You want to be uh, as efficient as possible, I guess. So, okay, but she held it out. No, but she held it out to, out to me all the same. That sounds a bit better. Okay, so um, there's already this sort of tension, this back and forth. Again, we might be able to, uh, we want to establish the character as quickly as possible. So, you know, this she was wrong thing sort of implies he has an attitude. Um, and maybe we can we can uh, we can deepen that as he interacts with this person. We're going to get a sense of of who he is. Um, so again, it's just about thinking logically, right? We have got uh, we've got this guy. He's received. Okay, so what does the package look like? That's obviously something that we need to know. Uh, so let's start describing that package. But she held it out to me all the same. Uh, it was a s standard. Uh, a standard jiffy ever okay here's some here's a tip here is a tip I was about to write it was a standard jiffy envelope but um, there might be uh, plenty of people in the world who don't know what a jiffy envelope is so it's usually better to um, to stick to easy to understand um, specifics and not use you know, pop culture references or anything like that, which are going to alienate any potential reader. So instead of saying a standard Jiffy envelope, let's just say a standard brown, uh, a standard brown envelope. And let's say uh, about A4. A4, so that's again, another problem. Uh, A4, I don't think uh, Americans for sure know what A4 is, but that's a size of envelope. But if this, okay, but maybe this implies that this guy is from is from England, and therefore that is how he would speak if he's British. Um, but either way, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're standing about, about A4 in size. Uh, and again, I'm just sort of building up what this package is going to look like. You know, what this is, and again, build. You know, I said there's a, this mysterious package. What's inside? Well, I'm giving you now clues what might be inside it. Uh, again, I don't know what's going to be inside it yet. Um, but let's keep building this fence. So with no obvious markings. Uh, not Maybe his name isn't even on it, right? Not even my name. Okay. Again, we're just going to try and... Um, just try and make this thing even more mysterious. Uh, so where do I want to go from here? So I asked who... Okay. Uh... So if this thing doesn't even have his name on, the first, what's your reaction going to be? Someone hands you a package, doesn't have your name on, the first thing you're going to ask is, well, who sent it, right? So I asked the, uh, I asked the concierge, uh, who sent it? Mm, mm, maybe just, maybe we don't need that bit. So I asked, again, you want to try and keep the, uh, keep your writing as clean as possible. I asked who'd sent it. Uh, but obviously we can't know that yet. Um, if that's going to be a mystery, you know, if it's just oh, you know, it's the you know the doctor sent it. Well, 
well, that could work actually, but um, I think we want to keep asking questions, make nothing, uh, reveal nothing, reveal nothing in the beginning. We're just starting out, so we need more and more questions. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I hope you guys are following my train of thought. I know it's uh, a little bit sporadic, but I'm trying to go through this logically. Um, again, we have I have no idea what this story is going to be about, um, but we are going to find out as we go. So I asked who sent it, but the uh, okay, but the concierge didn't know. Um, didn't know, or or how about she told me that it was a colleague? Yeah, that's better. So it's a plausible kind of thing here. It was a colleague who had accepted the package. Um, and so she didn't know. Okay, so again, uh, but she held it out to me all the same. It was a standard brown envelope, but A4 in size with no obvious markings, not even my name. I asked who'd sent it, but the concierge told me that it was her colleague who had accepted the package, and so uh, she didn't know. Okay, that's again. So we've really started to uh, put the focus onto this thing. We all want to know what's in this package. Uh, so let's let's zoom in a bit so you guys can maybe get a better view. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Um, okay, and so she didn't know. Um, okay, so this guy is going to be handed a package. What do we need? We need to now. Uh, it's got it's got to do something like it's got to. You know, once he takes it from her, we know that he's got to take it. We know that he's got to take this package and, and open it. Uh, so, in fact, since we're only writing one uh, one line, we are going to um, we are going to put that. We can use that fact that he has to open the package. We can use that as the end point of today's writing. So, at some point, he is going to. Uh, I opened the package and looked inside. I know that that has to happen um, and if you think about it all we're trying to do is get the reader to turn the page. So this is a great line to put right at the end of the first page because if you if you build up the suspense for something um, and you know on the last line of the page it says okay I'm going to tell you what was in the package I'm going to tell you what was what is this mystery then that helps, uh, that makes the reader want to uh, find out. So it's a, it's a little bit of a cheap ploy, it's like a cliffhanger, but uh, that is essentially what we are trying to do. We just want to get people to turn the page. Um, so she didn't know, okay. Um, so let's let's just try making this package even more weird, right? Let's, let's uh, so maybe it's like it's, it smells or it's, or even just simpler, maybe, um, Package was uh, was okay. Felt heavier than it looked. Than it looked, or than I expected. Probably than it looked. Um, you, okay. Um, maybe maybe it does. Maybe it does make a weird sound or a smell or something like that. So uh, and uh, I heard a metallic sound um, inside I heard a metallic sound inside does that make sense yeah okay but what is this metallic sound so again it just sort of it asks that question right we've got this mysterious box basically this letter and uh, and now it's sort of making this metallic sound and what that does is it's sort of you know uh, building up possibilities of what might be inside and that's really what we all we want to do now is um, we've asked a question and we want to get people guessing okay because now you want to find as a reader if you're guessing you know what is this uh, you know what's in this package oh, I think it's this I think it's that you know someone's going to turn the page just to find out if, if they were right uh, if they were right so the package felt heavier than it looked, and I heard a metallic sound inside. That sort of implies, again, if this is a if this is a thriller, you're, everyone's starting to think, you know, it could be a gun, it could be something like that, you know, a knife, um, two knives, um, 
but it's got to be something it's got to be something like that um, but it's also at the same time whatever he thinks is going to be inside this package cannot be inside this package uh, so again we're just gonna we're just gonna build that up uh, I, I'm just checking the frames per second I hope we're not losing uh, bandwidth here I hope everything is still clear guys let me know uh, what do you think about this package business anyway is this the kind of thing that would make you read more um, I quite like it um, so I know okay here's here's an idea I'd once um, yeah I'd once watched a documentary let's say this guy uh, this metallic sound instantly triggers this memory I'd once watched a documentary um, about there was this literally just popped into my mind so I'm gonna go with it and see what happens what do you think I'd once watched a documentary about those postal bombs um, about those postal bombs uh, back in when were those postal bombs? Uh, it was nine, 19 something. I don't know, but obviously we are not going to break uh, away from this page and go and search the internet because that is exactly how you lose a day of writing uh, by just going off topic and researching. We'll figure that out later. Um, so I once watched a documentary about those postal bombs back in you know 19 whatever. Uh, they you know, they'd made that same sound. Made uh, a similar sound. Here we go. Okay, a similar sound just before they'd gone off. They'd gone off. Okay, so this again, this is this is a kind of a, a logical progression that again builds suspense. So, you know, this guy he. he he takes the package, it feels heavier than he thought, and then it makes a metallic sound, and that metallic sound triggers, you know, this memory of those postal bombs. Um, and in fact, this line here also informs us as as potentially to, you know, this guy's um, this guy's whole um, his personality, because you know, who watches documentaries about, you know, postal bombs and that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, so I'd once watched a documentary about those postal bonds. This sort of implants the idea in, in, in the reader's mind that, you know, oh, this is going to be a dangerous package. It sets the tone for the book that it's going to be something, it's going to be a thriller, it's going to be something like that. And again, it's probably not a postal bomb in, the, in this package, but um, it has to be, uh, we, we're just planting the seeds, right? We are just planting seeds and making people feel apprehensive. Um, so, yeah, they probably made uh, made the same noise, made the same. That's actually better. Made the same noise, made the same yeah noise. Just before they'd gone off. Okay, so obviously this thing isn't going to go off. We we know that much. Um, uh, okay, now one of the things that I always do try and add into any um, any novel is a bit of humour. Um, but you have to be careful when you do that with a thriller because essentially humor is the release of tension whereas suspense is the building of it. But my natural instinct is to write this line. Uh, it probably, right, you know, not that I'm one of those, one of those, um, you know, paranoid nutcases. Nutcases? People still use that? I don't know. Um, I don't know if people still use that word. But uh, not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, you know. But I, you know, but I do. Uh, uh, but I am no. Okay, so the, here's the obvious joke. Again, oh, and actually, even better. So we've said that this guy maybe he's going to be, you know, a little bit, um, a little bit of a. Uh, he's not going to have a very good relationship with women. So. Um, Let's use that, right? If he's got this sort of an attitude problem, but I do have an XY, right? Okay. All right. Now, now we're starting to build up a picture of this guy again. And this line, yeah, it's funny, a little bit funny, but um, it also informs us, uh, you know, a little bit more about about this guy himself. You know, what's going on in his life, um, and what uh, what kind of person he is. You know, not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, but you know, I do have an ex-wife. 
So this guy's got some jokes. This guy is going to have some jokes. Um, and you know what? It can work to have some, some humor in, in a suspense novel because... I'll tell you who did do that very well was uh, John Grisham. John Grisham, if you ever read, what was the uh, novel? The um, the Street Lawyer, I think it was. That's a great first chapter for showing you how to build suspense while at the same time, the main protagonist is, uh, the protagonist is, is he's making these jokes in his head. He's just making these great observations, um, you know, in a hostage situation. Uh, so it can work, it can work, but, uh, I know I need to be careful with it uh, because this is not a piece of, you know, humor, humorous fiction. This is suspense. So uh, let's read this through again and just see where, where we are and how we want to proceed. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe and then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. Yeah, I like that. I think that's actually pretty good. Uh, it goes like this. Uh, three days after I arrived in Japan, I came back to my hotel and the concierge told me that a package had been left for me. She was wrong. I wasn't expecting a package. I didn't know anyone in Japan, nor had I told anyone that I was coming here. So who could be sending me a package? Okay, but she held it out to me all the same. It was a standard brown envelope, about A4 in size, with no obvious markings, not even my name. I asked who had sent it, but the concierge told me that it was her colleague who had accepted the package, and so she didn't know. Okay, you know what? I, that's not bad. That kind of pulls me in a bit. I don't know about you guys. Let me know. What do you think? Uh, that kind of pulls me in. The package felt heavier than it looked and I heard a metallic sound inside. Okay, again, now we're starting to build up what's in this package. Uh, you know, I'd once watched a documentary about those postal bombs back in 19-whatever. Boom! You know, we're, we're really uh, now starting to go onto the edge of our seats. We, we're getting an idea. Yeah, they probably made the, uh, the same noise just before they'd gone off. Uh, you know, not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, you know, but I do have an ex-wife. Okay, so that kind of then just cuts the tension just a little bit because again, we don't want to go too fast too quickly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, then it's not bad. Okay, so this guy is sort of standing there. Let's set the scene. This guy is standing in the middle of his lobby of the hotel and um, he is holding this mysterious uh, unexpected package. Um, Okay, so the concierge is, you know, going to be looking at him thinking, you know, what's wrong with this guy? It's just a package. Take the package. Um, so she's going to say something like that. She's going to say, uh, you, know, you know, is everything all right, sir? Uh, is everything all right, sir? Ask the concierge. Ask the concierge. Okay. Um, now, again, here's an opportunity for this guy to show us his character. This is the first uh, sort of exchange of dialogue. Dialogue is a great way to reveal character, probably the best way. Uh, and one tip that I have learnt over and over again uh, about dialogue is keep the exchanges very short and uh, try not to waffle. So maybe we can do in one line here something that is going to uh, inform us about this guy's character. Um, what is it going to be? Is everything all right, sir? The concierge. Um, who sent me the? Oh no, he's already asked who sent the package. So uh, what does he need to do? Um, I'll tell you what would be funny. Uh, again, I don't. I've got to be careful with this humour, but uh, it's sort of a very James Bond kind of thing to say. Uh, I don't suppose you know you'd open this. So again, this guy has received this uh, package. Oh, we have a follower. Thank you, Shayna Zeth, for the follow. You are amazing. Um, so here we go. Is everything okay? So again, we are. Um, let's be, again. This this whole thing. Let's just talk it out. This guy is. He's come back to his hotel after three days. He's in a country. Uh, we don't know why he's in the country, but. Uh, the concierge has told him that this package is, is waiting for him, it's been sent to him, uh, and he starts to think that, my gosh, there might be a, you know, a bomb in there. He's clearly, he's clearly is a paranoid nutcase. Um, uh, and the concierge asks him, you know, I don't suppose you'd open it. Okay, is everything all right, sir? Asks the concierge, I don't suppose you'd open this for me. Uh, and she'd be like, you know, sir. Uh, okay, so it's kind of a funny line, it's kind of a suave line. Um, Maybe this guy isn't such a nutcase, maybe he's just, you know, quick-witted, he's a bit, 
you know, if it, if it is sort of a spy genre that we're writing here, which potentially it could be, and probably is going to be, because again, that is my style, um, then this guy is going to be, at least he's going to have some kind of caustic humor, a dark sense of humor, because that's how these guys uh, get through, you know, their day. They're dealing with terrible things. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of personality type. So, okay. Obviously, she's not going to open the package. This guy's got to do it on his own. He's the protagonist. He's got to be the one with agency. So, uh, no, I didn't think she would. Uh, she would open it. No, just she would. Uh, I think it's pretty clear what we're talking about. Um, but it can't be that easy, right? So we need, basically, we need now to get this guy alone and have him see what's inside. Okay, so no, I didn't think it would. So let's try and get him out of this situation as quick as possible and move him on to the next scene, okay? Because this is an opportunity for what I would say is a bad writing habit, is just to add in a bunch of filler, you know, describing the hotel lobby and all that stuff. We just want to, we want to know what's in the package. We've asked the question, we've built the suspense. So, uh, nor did I, uh, you know, it's, it's something like, nor did I get the, the, the chance to convince her to open the package. Um, because let's just, um, let's just use a, uh, a random character, another person, uh, convince her because, uh, just get someone else, maybe because another guest, okay, another guest is trying to check in, that sort of puts puts the pressure on this guy to take the package and, you know, go away uh, and uh, and find out what's inside it. So another guest, because another guest um, wanted to check in, right? Wanted to uh, check in. Uh, but let's, again, we have another opportunity here to, you know, deepen the character. At all times we want to develop character. So let's just let's not just say another guest let's say another guest some some uh, and again if you want to make this guy have a problem with women i don't know why this is in my head my gosh you know people are going to be like raft you hate women um i don't hate women but <laughs> this guy seems to uh or at least that's the kind of character flaw that will be at least compelling uh, to read about and probably that's going to be something he has to learn to, you know, get over and deal with by the end of this novel. So, uh, no, I didn't think she would, nor did I get the chance to convince her because another guest, some, let's say some big fat, uh, some, some big fat loud, I'm gonna go with American. I love Americans, but um, I just, you know, I was recently in Venice and I saw uh, the American uh, contingent there being very loud and pushy, so that's in my head, and that's what I'm going to use. Uh, some big fat American wanted to check check herself in. I think is uh, is better. And okay, uh, because another get so, right barge me out of the way. Yeah, barge me out of the way. That's pretty good. Uh, and it's sort of in keeping with the tone, you know. Barge me out of the way. It's it's um, it's kind of it's kind of funny, but it's you know it's. It's in keeping with the tone, that's that's what it sees, right? So she barged me out of the way uh, uh, in order, right? In, in order to check herself in there. Uh, I think that's that's, that's right. Um, okay, actually, look, we are almost at the end of the first page, uh, which is pretty exciting. We've got about, what, like 15 lines and then, and then we're done. Uh, and we already know how this page ends, right? We've got this, uh, we, know, we know that he's gonna open the package and look inside, and that's gonna take us, it's gonna force us to turn the page because we want to know after all this preamble we want to know what's inside so it's a cheap trick but it's an effective trick um, and we are going to use it so all we have to do is get okay so he's probably going to do this in his room and again this is this is the technique right of writing uh, uh, of writing you sort of you have ideas you know where things roughly want to go and then you uh, and then you just write towards that conclusion some authors, they, they know what the end of the novel is going to be. They have to know what the end of the novel is going to be, and then they write towards that. Uh, in my case, I have no idea what this novel is about, but even so, just sentence by sentence, you can figure out, you can see just that little bit further ahead. Uh, you can, it's like driving, you know, the famous example, it's you're driving your car at night on a country road, and 
your headlights are on and you can only see just that little bit further. Um, but you can get home like that, you know, you'll make it all the way home um, as long as you just keep looking uh, that little bit further ahead. So he's got to go back to his room, right? So I went back to my room. Uh, I opened the package and looked, it's, it's something like that. That's how this thing, that's how this thing goes. Um, So maybe, uh, okay, we need to read this through again and then it will probably make, uh, make sense. So, okay, I'm gonna tell you a story which will believe and then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. It goes like this, three days after I arrived in Japan, I came to my hotel, came back to my hotel and the concierge told me that a package had been left for me. She was wrong. I wasn't expecting a package. I didn't know anyone in Japan, nor had I told anyone that I was coming here. So who could be sending me a package? Okay, but she held it out to me all the same. She held it out to me all the same. Uh, it was a standard brown envelope, about A4 in size, with no obvious markings, not even my name. I asked who had sent it, but the concierge told me that it was a colleague who had accepted the package, and so she didn't know. The package felt heavier than it looked. Uh, that feels like there might be a sentence missing there. Right? Do you guys? Did you guys hear that? It, it felt like there should have been something else. Um, and you know what? I, I kind of know what that should be already. Um, it should be something like something that's something like this first sentence. Just this promise to the reader that this is important, and if you if you pay attention, maybe you'll you'll be able to figure out um, what's coming later. Now I don't know what's coming later, but it, it needs to be something like that. So um, yeah, it's something like you know. Uh, Needless to say, it was a bad idea. Or oh, uh, needless to say, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have taken it. Have taken it. Uh, needless to say, I shouldn't have taken it. Okay, okay. This is this is exactly what it needs. Uh, uh, needless to say, I shouldn't have taken it. But I've never been one to make good decisions. Okay, now what this is, I'll tell you why this is uh, a good line and something that really should appear, something like this should appear in the first page or as soon as possible in the novel is because it it sets up the, uh, what they call the, uh, the theme, the theme stated. Um, so if you guys have, uh, have heard of uh, Blake Snyder who wrote uh, Save the Cat um, or Jessica Brody who wrote Save the Cat writes a novel, and in that, in that, in that book, they uh, or she um, deconstructs the 15 points of a novel. Uh, one of those points is the theme stated, and the theme stated is literally just what the character needs to learn, the moral lesson the character needs to learn, the improvement that he has to make or she has to make to herself by the end of the novel. Uh, and this is this is a problem that a lot of us have. You know, we tend not to make the best decisions. Um, so yes, this is going to be potentially a thriller, but there also has to be a character arc and, uh, you know, this guy's obviously going to make some bad decisions in this novel and by the end of it, he's got to learn to, um, he's got to learn to make better ones. So the story will inform that and, and also, you know, this guy, you know, like we said, we have, we have this ex-wife character and his, his whole, uh, attitude, bad attitude, uh, towards women. So, uh, in fact, there's probably, um, I just have another idea here. No, uh, okay, so listen to, listen to this, tell me what you guys think of this. Again, it's a little bit more of a joke, but I think this works. Uh, no said, a voice in my head. Uh, okay, we need a name for the ex-wife. Oh, actually, you know what? We don't even have a name for the main character, but we haven't needed one so far, but let's, uh, Sabrina's a pretty cool name for a, for a, for a woman, um, Sabrina. I'm going to go with Sabrina. We can always change it later. It's not that important. No sort of voice in my head. Sabrina, being his ex-wife. Um, again, there is a joke here. I'm not. I don't quite have it, but it's you know. Sabrina wouldn't kill me uh, so impersonally. Uh, he's again. He's, he's thought about this postal bombs. Uh, he thinks this package might be a postal bomb. 
Uh, and then he says, you know, not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, but I do have an ex-wife. And then it's that, you know, no, no, Sabrina wouldn't kill me via postal bomb. Yeah, that's exactly via postal bomb. Uh, no, via um, the joke is something like via via unmarked postal bomb. Um, the joke, it, uh, the joke is obviously she'd yes, she'd use you know FedEx, you know she'd expedite it. Uh, okay, so read that again. So. It's something like that. Again, I don't want to use too much humor, but I think it's important to establish character as soon as possible. So, uh, the package felt heavier than it looked, and I heard a metallic sound inside. I'd once watched a documentary about those postal bombs back in, you know, 19-whatever. Uh, they probably made the same noise just before they'd gone off. Not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, but I do have an ex-wife. No, said a voice in my head. Sabrina wouldn't kill me via unmarked postal bomb. She'd use FedEx. Okay, that's, it's a joke, it's, it kind of works, I don't know, is it funny? You guys can let me know. Uh, we'll, probably we'll delete all these jokes, you know, later on, but it sort of gives me a sense of forward progress just to write them, so I'll keep them in. Uh, and then, okay, then the concierge sort of steps in, brings us back to reality, takes this guy back to, the, you know, the, uh, what's going to happen. Is everything alright, sir? I don't suppose you'd open this for me, sir. You know, no, I didn't think she would. Um, nor did I get the chance to convince her because another guest, some big fat American woman, again, that's that, that attitude problem, you know, barge me out of the way in order to check herself, uh, in order to check herself in. Um, okay, okay. Uh, but basically, this needs to come pretty quickly here. You know what? Uh, you know what this needs? Okay, you're... You, I just realized something wrong with the formatting here. This is why this doesn't look right. Um, we need to get these lines spaced correctly. Uh, I like a 1.5 uh, spacing to the line. I know that the only reason I've done that, not because it's now, with <laughs> now that we're closer to the end of the page, um, but because it looks right. It's When you send something to an agent, uh, it should be spaced at least 1.5. Um, but also, if you can see the word count at the bottom here, uh, 291 words. I was looking at it before and we were only halfway down the page, barely even that. There should be about 330 words on a page um, of A4. So that wasn't just some cheap ploy because I, <laughs> because I was getting worried um, that I wasn't going to finish a page. Um, although it is getting a bit difficult to figure out uh, what happens next. This is generally what you do. You have a 1.5 line spacing. Uh, and that does look so much more legible, doesn't it? Um, okay, so uh, in order to check yourself in, so this guy, okay, if this guy again has is a bit of a, if he's a spy, if he's a, if he's a man's man, so to speak, then he's not going to take this very well, being barged out of the way. So he needs to react to this. Um, and by the way, this is exactly, this is how I think of. Uh, you know, writing a novel, it's just what is the first line, what is, and then as long as you've got a, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Rachel, for um, for following, that's really nice of you, uh, really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, it's just, you write a good first line, or, you know, a compelling first line, and then literally every line that you write afterwards um, just follows on from it. There doesn't need to be anything complicated, that is writing. Um, you just go through it logically. So what is the logical next sentence out of this? After this, he's just been barged out of the way. So he's going to, you know, he's going to either shout back at this woman. Hey, I, uh, hey, might not, uh, maybe again, I don't want to put in too much dialogue here. Um, ah, so, you know, okay. Okay. We have another opportunity for a joke. Um, but you know, do I want to take that opportunity again? I'll probably delete these, but Keep in mind, this guy, he's he's thinking that potentially there is a bomb inside this uh, this package, and someone's just barged him out of the way, right? If he's holding a bomb, that's going to be pretty scary. So you know, you know, my my God, she could have killed us all. Um, she could have killed us all. My God, she could. Oh, okay. Um, I know. 100% someone is going to comment, why did you put, you, you know, why did you put a, uh, 
a dash instead of a zero instead of an O. Um, that is just a religious thing. Uh, you know, don't write the name of God. Uh, you know what? Don't even don't even comment. It's not even worth commenting on. I'm gonna let's just leave that. Um, so no, I didn't think she would. Okay, my God. Maybe this is the that. Now I've got to be careful with this voice in the head thing. Uh, my first novel, hearing voices, um, has a main character who has voices in his head. So actually, this could be the second, the second part of that novel, but uh, you know, the second instalment. I don't think it's going to be. I want to write something completely from scratch. Um, said that voice again. She could have killed us all. It's uh, this might need to be in italics because it's a voice in the head. I'm not sure, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, Okay, basically we just need to get this guy off the scene now, so what, so I took the, uh, so he has to go back to his room, right? Um, I took, uh, let's just get him out of there, uh, and then we can always fill in what's left with a sentence, you know, an extra sentence or two, so uh, let's put this back. We are almost finished, wow, how long have we been going? I thought this would take about an hour, it is coming up to the 58 minute mark, which is just over 58 minutes. Uh, okay, so I took the package. Uh, back to my room. Again, the, I'm going to say amateur author, not that I'm a professional, but the amateur would, you know, describe the whole, um, you know, the lobby, the staircase, the chandelier, everything he sees on the way back to the room. And although that does sort of push off answering the question and add to the suspense um, of what's in the package, it's just annoying. I hate when people do that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say I took my took the package back to my room, you know, on the second floor, whatever. Um, uh, closed the door. No, you don't need to say I closed the door. Uh, sat at, you know, he sits at the desk. Sat at the desk. Um, and after a few minutes, maybe of just like praying that he didn't, you know, thanking, thanking God that he didn't just, you know, be that he wasn't just blown up by a potential, uh, by a potential bomb. But after a few minutes of silent contemplation, um, I opened the package and looked inside. It's something, right? It's something like that. Uh, this needs to be formatted the same way. Why isn't this 1.5? Uh, let's go 1.5. This should be lines. Okay, that is not quite right. There we go. Uh, okay, okay, so we actually almost uh, are done. We have, what? Okay, so we need to fill in two lines. We need to find two lines and then this page is done. So, uh, where are those two lines? That's what we need to find. Um, let's see, let's see here. I'm gonna tell you a story which you'll believe and then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. It goes like this, three days after I arrived in Japan, I came back to my hotel and the concierge told me that a package had been left for me. She was wrong. I wasn't expecting a package. I didn't know anyone in Japan, nor had I told anyone that I was coming here. So who could be sending me a package? But she held it out to me all the same. It was a standard brown envelope, about A4 in size, with no obvious markings, not even my name. I asked who'd sent it, but the concierge told me that it was her colleague who had accepted the package, and so she didn't know. Needless to say, I shouldn't have taken, I shouldn't have taken it but I've never been one to make good, good decisions. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the punctuation here. Needless to say, I shouldn't have taken it, another comma, but I've been one, but I've never, ah, but I've never been one, that's why it doesn't read right. But I've never been one to make good decisions. Uh, the package felt heavier than it looked, and I heard a metallic sound inside. I'd once watched a documentary about those postal bombs back in, you know, 19 whatever. They probably made the same noise just before they'd gone off. Not that I'm one of those paranoid nutcases, but I do have an ex-wife. No, said a voice in my head. Sabrina wouldn't kill me via unmarked postal bomb. She'd use FedEx. Uh, kill me or kill you? Not sure. Let's keep it as kill me. You know, is everything all right, sir? Asked the concierge. I didn't suppose you'd open this for me. Uh, sir? No, I didn't think she would. Nor did I get a chance to convince her because another guest, some big fat American woman, barged me out of the way in order to check herself in. My God said that, uh, that should be an exclamation mark. My God said that voice again. She could have killed us all. Uh, so actually that should be like this. Uh, I took the package back tomorrow. It feels like there should be something here, right? Something just before this, a connector, 
just to get him from this one scene back to the uh, to the next scene. Maybe uh, I don't know what that would be though. You know, he needs to. Maybe he needs to just you know um, mentally think. You know, curse this woman out, this big fat American woman for barging in. Something like that. I don't. I don't really know, but maybe I'll figure that out. Maybe I'll figure that out tomorrow. Anyway, I took the package back to my room on the my room on the second floor. Do we need this second floor thing? Uh, I don't know. So we uh, sat at the desk, and after a few, just one few, after a few minutes uh, of silent contemplation, I opened the package and looked inside. Okay, so that I mean, look, that that's pretty much a page, and you know what? Let's just do that. And hey, presto, we have written a page of writing. Um, and you know what? It's not so bad. That's a pretty good first day for me. That's a pretty clean first page. It reads fairly well. It establishes what we're trying to do here. A couple of things to note that we don't have a name even for this first character. Um, and oh, we have another subscriber. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you do. You do have to make an account to uh, leave a comment for sure. Um, actually, I wonder. You know, I could put the chat up on the uh, on this main screen here. Maybe I'll do that next time. But basically, this is a uh, this is the first page tomorrow, and we instantly know what the what the next page has to be. It's going to be we're going to open this package and we're going to find out what's inside. And whatever is inside has to be compelling enough to uh, to carry the story on. But this first page has done its job, in my opinion. Um, we've established a scenario it's pretty intriguing and if you want to find out what happens next then you've got to turn the page so um, okay I think that's pretty good for today again I want to keep these things about an hour long and um, no more than that one page every day uh, I will put links um, uh, to anything that I've referenced you know like save the cat writes a novel all those uh, writing resources that I've referenced in this, I'll put those in the links. They'll be below the YouTube videos. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about this first page, where it can be improved, uh, how it can be improved. You know, your own thoughts on writing, where you have troubles, um, and you know, we'll, we'll start this conversation. Um, thank you to everyone in the chat for showing up. Uh, really appreciate the support, um, and hopefully, you know, when this channel becomes super popular. And there are millions of followers, you'll be able to say, you know, I was there. That first one, I was there. Um, so thanks for watching, uh, and I will see you next time when I continue to, here it comes, right before your eyes.